we're moving into the concept of supply chain. Uh, we talked about the value chain and now we're getting into supply chain. So what's the difference between a value chain and a supply chain? A value chain typically deals with all facets of an organization, primary as well as supportive facets. What is a supply chain? A supply chain technically is where the material flows, that means where the, the raw material and the finished material flows, where the information flows, that means the parties to the information in terms of the flow of the raw material and the finished goods and any other uh, uh, information that may be required to run the operative process of the organization. And the third part, of course, is the area of finance. That means supply chain typically starts with the vendor, tracks the entire process, whoever are the party to it, and ends with the entire customer or the end customer. That means we're tracking more of the operative aspect of the business. We're not dealing with the intangible aspects of the business. So maybe a couple of support functions may not be a part of supply chain, may be a part of supply chain. It all depends on how the supply chain has been built. Supply chain, international supply chains typically are a set of vendors, a set of value adding partners. Uh, if you notice the business value chain typically uh, talked about internal primary and the secondary processes, but supply chain has external partners playing a role. So international supply chain extend across countries. Now let's start working on why does it become very relevant in design thinking process. Let's understand India. India is the peninsula which is in the Indian Ocean. We all know that. But let's understand its strategic importance from the supply chain point of view. Indian Ocean carries a whole lot of cargo vessels. Indian Ocean is very strategic. And typically because India is a peninsula, what happens is materials and shipments can come in to the west coast they can come into the east coast they can come into the south coast and the nation is now creating integrated supply chains which means you're going to have a network of ships boats trains airlines road transportation pipelines all that put together creates an integrated supply chain India is also emerging as a hub for international business and international trade, not only for exports, but imports and in terms of the, uh, the material moving from India to other locations. That means it also becomes a space for transshipments to happen. Again, where does design thinking come in? Design thinking is absolutely relevant to supply chain. In fact, my assessment of the current situation of the country is if there are maximum opportunity areas for design thinking it's going to be supply chains and where am i coming from i'm coming from multiple point of view being a student of international business i realize that india's geopolitical strategic importance in the global market is increasing tremendously india has fascinatingly amazing educated talent we are an english speaking country we have all the sophisticated technology in the process that we may need we are a technology hub when it comes to information technology a lot of knowledge processing outsourcing um, a lot of uh, outsourced agencies are operating from india that means business processes are also being managed from india a lot of financial processes are being managed from india Entrepreneurship in India is on the grow. So I'm also going to cover in the supply chain part, the area of entrepreneurship so that all colleges which are running entrepreneurial setups will also have some inputs in terms of how design thinking works there. China was a big supply chain hub before the pandemic. But if you look at the situation now and the kind of developments that are happening and with Quad coming into play, with a lot of international affiliations happening. India is going to be big time in terms of the supply chain. And engineers play a very critical role in supply chain, something that 
Satish has already talked about, but I think I just need to recap one more thing. Supply chain comprises operations. Operations are managed by engineers. And therefore, understanding and knowledge of supply chains is extremely critical. I repeat, to what extent do you want to give away the knowledge that has been given to you in these five days, four days? Is completely to your wisdom. But don't forget the Rosenthal effect. Don't forget the Pygmalion effect. The expectation that you have in your own mind will create an expectation in the student. If you have an expectation that it is too much for a student, your student is going to exactly respond like that. But if you have an expectation that I'm going to create students who are going to be massive in terms of design thinking, that's exactly what you will do. And I think as nation builders, design thinking happens to be a focal area. And I'm so happy, I reiterated, that VTU has launched off this entire process of design thinking with all of you. Obviously, it requires an ecosystem. We will talk about it before we end the session. But let's restrict ourselves to the conversation of supply chain. So India, geostrategically important. A lot of integrated ports are currently happening within India. There's a lot of investment that is happening at ports. There's a lot of investment happening in terms of upgradation of the supply chain networks. There is a lot of um, investment in terms of the corridors, which are green corridors being which are being created for shipments to move. And therefore, if you look at railways, airlines, land, gas pipelines, water, ocean and sea freight, I think India is absolutely on. In fact, very interestingly, when I was working in Bangladesh, one of the persons in Bangladesh said, do you realize your country actually has deserts, it has mountains, it has rivers, it has lakes, it has the sea, it has the ocean, and it has the bay. We don't look at India with that kind of a mindset that we've got possibly everything that is required in a particular country and therefore supply chain becomes very critical. Now with technology coming in, drones coming in, information technology coming in, supply chains are becoming extremely sophisticated. And as supply chains become sophisticated, what happens is the complexity of the problems also increase tremendously. And that's where design thinking comes into play. Take it from me. Your institute with engineers and with management faculties put together can pick up supply chain projects for design thinking. Put your students on real time internships, charge, work out associations with industrial which are industrial associations, manufacturing associations, management associations. Talk to your local SMEs. Talk to local large companies. Tell them you have the design thinking center of excellence is available. Go pick up projects there. And I tell you, it's going to be a very, very profitable uh, aspect for you. But forget about the profit part of it. We are educationists. It will also enrich us in terms of the way we go about design thinking and you'll also start finding a lot of value in design thinking. And I think the most satisfying part of design thinking is when you actually see your prototype work and uh, sort out a lot of problems which the organization was facing. Let me move on to the presentation. And uh, here's where it sh I share the presentation with you. There you go. The presentation is being shared. We talked about value chain and from value chain. Now I want to move to the supply chain. I'm going to devote the next 45 minutes on the supply chain and this slide only. I'm going to give you a lot of stories in terms of how it works. And I'll talk about how design thinking operates in this whole context. The best part about supply chain is it is agnostic. It is true for services. It is true for tangible products. Now, do I have a supply chain? I do have a supply chain. And how do I have a supply chain? I have my own set of vendors, though I'm a service company. I have my own set of vendors who are supplying probably technology to me, probably all the uh, material that I require to deliver my workshops, to conduct the interventions, all that is happening. My office here is a transformation process. It's an operations part of it. And in the operations part of it, every possible aspect of operations is moving. 
and then there is this customer and the customer's customer and therefore even my service network has its own channel for our e-learning portal we have affiliate partners which we have we've started having all over the world and they are moving our e-learning content so there's a supply chain there too where you may call that partnerships but ultimately for me my finished good is the content that is moving so that means supply chains are operating everywhere but let's restrict our conversation to not the intangible part of the supply chain because in service industry supply chain may not be of too much of relevance but when it comes to tangible products the supply chain is absolutely essential in my business is material flowing yes in my business is information flowing yes in my business is finance flowing yes that means if these three things are happening the supply chain is completely operative you will ask me tangible goods have an inventory what is my inventory in service my inventory is the number of days i am limited to 365 days in a year and the whole idea of optimizing my inventory is that i optimize my dates i optimize my hours that's the way it goes let's come back to the tangible part of the supply chains if you look at the supply chain on the right hand side in the picture there the supply chain has headquarters the supply chain has a factory the supply chain has transportation something that satish extensively delve into warehouses we have the suppliers who are our vendors we have the retailers and we have our customers and the extended supply chain is customers customer we are discussing international supply chains which means there is an international headquarter there is the regional headquarter there is a local headquarter there are international plants that means there are plants located in different air, in different countries logistics is international that means you're dealing with a logistics partner who's got vessels airlines everything moving uh, transportation systems moving all over the world and a lot of uh, exchange of uh, raw material finished goods is happening between the countries <clears throat> there are warehouses all over the world there can be central warehouses then there are these regional warehouses and then there are these district level warehouses and then the local warehouses you have suppliers who are you know every country specializes in a particular area like satish was mentioning automotive ancillaries india is doing great so we are specializing in that and uh, if we look at international business anything that a country specializes in has to be exported anything that the country does not specialize in is imported that's the normal rule that's the adam smith rule of how international business happens retail you have retail all over the world in fact if you were to look at uh, walmart if you have to look at maybe uh, uh, shoes like reebok nike if you have to look at ikea you have outlets everywhere and customers in international supply chains are based everywhere there's also e-commerce and e-commerce typically operates across the entire supply chain there is no office per se for an e-commerce it's controlled from multiple places and that's how e-commerce also operates e-commerce typically is doing business on the web through the internet where the entire money and cash is moving digital currency is moving big time on supply chains now earlier currency was in check currency was in cash today currency is completely digital and therefore digital information digital currency sometimes digital material and sometimes tangible material is moving on supply chains that is the right hand side box which i will elaborate with stories as to how design thinking works on the left hand side we find the strategic fit of a supply chain and this is a design thinking problem supply chains are expected to be highly responsive which means i must get the material and i must deliver the finished goods as and when the time requires that means my responsiveness has to be high and supply chains also have to be efficient which means the cost of running a supply chain has to be controlled if the cost of the supply chain shoots up my profits erode and a lot of times do we see companies where the cost of the supply chain because of the noise in the supply chain the cost is so high that in spite of the fact that they have a monopoly product they actually move into losses on the x axis you find the certainty of demand and the uncertainty of demand 
we are not living in a world where the demand is certain. We are living in a world where the demand is completely uncertain. Whether it is healthcare, whether it is pharma, whether it is automotive vehicles, whether it is any scientific instruments that we're talking about or healthcare, we are absolutely operating in an uncertain demand. What is the implied uncertainty therefore on the supply chain? The implied uncertainty on the supply chain is in a given situation, when I'm not able to accurately predict the demand, it puts an uncertainty on the supply chain. So I have to adjust the supply chain constantly to deal with the spectrum of certain demand and uncertain demand. This is such a complex problem to solve that design thinking is the only way out in supply chain. There's a blog that I've written on supply chain and design thinking on LinkedIn. If you're not there on LinkedIn, don't worry. Connect with me on Facebook. Again, Niket Karasgi. Let's see if we can create a group on Facebook, which can again start moving uh, digital uh, design thinking content there. I'm absolutely open to it, but provided uh, we do have enough people that it justifies movement on it on Facebook. But on Twitter, it works for sure. A lot of my content moves on Twitter. But if you're looking at the strategic fit in supply chains, the problem is that the more responsive the supply chain, the more expensive or the more the, more the cost incurred in running the supply chain. The more efficient the supply chain, it means that the cost of running the supply chain is low. Now, efficiency of supply chain can be controlled as long as the market is certain. You can have a standard operating procedure for running your supply chains. And once that is prototyped, that's perfectly fine. But as the uncertainty of demand is imposed on the supply chain, the pressure on responsiveness of the supply chain goes up. And therefore, in supply chain, there is always a trade-off between the efficiency of supply chain and responsiveness of supply chain, which means the moment you make a supply chain efficient, it becomes less responsive. The moment you make the supply chain more responsive, it's less efficient. And efficiency is not the engineering efficiency here. The efficiency here is being talked about in terms of the rupee value. That means the more responsive my chain that I want it to be, I will have to stock more inventory. I will have to bring in more technology. I will have to stock a lot of finished goods, the finished goods inventory. And I will have to have high speed transportation mechanisms to make it responsive. The fashion industry, why is fashion expensive? Fashion is expensive because the responsiveness of the supply chain has to be so high because fashions tend to have a very limited time span and they erode. That's why fashion gets very expensive. Now there is this zone of strategic fit and that is what is a design thinking problem. And the design thinking problem is that we need to balance now how are we going to meet with the uncertain demand and how will we ensure the responsiveness and the efficiency of a supply chain at a balanced level. Something that is okay with the customer and something that is okay with the organization also. Because what is okay with the organization is normally not okay with the customer. What is okay with the customer is not okay with the organization. Give you a simple rule, simple formula. A very interesting story. Adult diapers, you know, the senior citizens require diapers, the adult diapers, they were being manufactured by a company and they were being put into a retail store. Ideally, for an adult diaper, the certainty of the demand is assured because we know how many senior citizens are there. We know how many senior citizens are using the diapers. And therefore, we also know the consumption pattern of the diapers that will happen over a week or a month. But very interestingly, the case study of the supply chain showed that even though the demand was certain, there were situations of stockouts and excess stocks in the supply chain. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I run a simulation on supply chains called the beer game. The beer game is a simulated environment where we have, we have the vendor, the supplier, we have the factory, we have the distributor, and we have the retailer. These are the four stations. And on these four stations, order is, is ha ordering is happening with, between stations. 
the raw material is being ordered by the source guy. The source guy is moving it into the operations. The operations guy sets the finished goods onto the distributor and the distributor moves the stock of the finished goods across to the retailers. And though the, the, the demand is certain for the beer bottle, interestingly in that supply chain in every simulation and by the way it's a licensed simulation it's it's a simulation that's been created by supply chain experts so don't take me wrong what comes out inevitably after every simulated environment that in the system either the source is stocking too high or experiencing a stock out or the operations station is experiencing a stock out or high stocks or the same phenomena at the distributor and the retailer and the phenomena is not the norm phenomenon phenomena across the supply chain somewhere overstocking is happening somewhere understocking is happening and that is called the bullwhip effect which is reflected on the top on the left hand side that means if you see the graph between the customer retailer distributor manufacturer and supplier it gives you the shape of a bullwhip highs and lows Sometimes somebody overstocks, somebody understocks. And why does this happen? This happens because of the uncertainty and the responsiveness that is imposed on the supply chain. A human being is just not able to function effectively, takes a decision in the supply chain. And this collaboration that is required, the collaboration does not happen. And therefore the noise in the supply chain. I think majority of the prototypes that I have done, 40 odd prototypes that I've done, out of these 40 odd prototypes, except for one, everything else has been on supply chain. That means 39 out of 40 prototypes that I have made in the last eight years, six years, 39 of them are supply chain prototypes. And the only thing that we were discussing in the supply chain was how do we control this bullwhip effect? Somewhere the stock is high, somewhere it is low. But why is this bullwhip coming into effect? It's not so simple. So when design thinking problem was taken for solving this bullwhip effect, we realized there were relationship issues in the organization. There were forecasting issues in the organization. There was analysis issue in the organization. There were issues and noises pertaining to the way the processes were running, the systems were running, the type of the vendors they had. And even if they had the best of the vendors, are those vendors able to amalgamate with the organization's culture? We also had huge problems in terms of the logistics availability. And when the international supplies happen, and when the supply chain operates internationally, this particular problem compounds all the more. I'm so happy that in your curriculum, you will be covering the whole idea of design thinking and supply chains. Now, how will you teach this to your students? One is definitely with projects that you can take from the market, which also become internships for students. However, supply chain case studies are available in plenty. Use existing supply chain case studies and adapt them for design thinking. You don't need to look at an existing supply chain as a supply chain case study only for that supply chain. And by the way, I see that a whole lot of you are academic institutions in your own self. And all of you also tend to have B schools somewhere in the campus or maybe the other campus. And I think that's where engineering faculties and management faculties can coordinate together and start sourcing, creating case studies for each other, and it will feed into design thinking. So when we talk about international supply chains and when we talk about design thinking, let me talk about certain case studies in my real life as a consultant that I've handled across the supply chain and the retail value chain that we're talking about here. And we will see how this entire supply chain is operating. So let's look at the supply chain. It comprises the entire retail value chain also. Like I said, on supply chain, typically you're starting with the source and you're delivering to the customer and the end customer information, material and finance. These three things are moving on the supply chain. Let's talk about certain case situations that I've handled. One of the case situations that I handled in manufacturing was line balancing, project management. Whenever a new component is created by engineers, 
and that now that new component has to be given to a vendor and the vendor has to provide his first shipment and a flawless shipment complete project management a lot of work of uh, design thinking there because there are a lot of human dimensions have operating there a lot of process dimensions operating there and can design thinking be used for creation of processes absolutely it can be used for even creation of processes uh, line balancing like i kept saying uh, the the idle time uh, the kind of quality flaws that come in the the system halting the line halting all that becomes a part of the design thinking process in fact quality orientation itself is a design thinking process so design thinking process in a in a manufacturing uh, system you can run your total quality total quality management through through design thinking you can do line balancing with design thinking you can do kaizen with design thinking you can do continuous improvement programs with design thinking that means in the factory lots of stuff that can happen headquarters design thinking at headquarters is all about integrating the plant and the different functions together and the challenges are huge in fact one of the biggest challenge that is uh, encountered at an international level at the at the international headquarters is which country will have what kind of demand forecasting is the most complicated problem in supply chain can design thinking solve it yes we picked up certain projects in design thinking where forecasting process has been automated forecasting uh, prototypes were created and accurate forecasting was definitely aspired for but did it go to 100% no because again we're living in a world which is volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous can't happen cultural integration at headquarters human resource management at headquarters creation of new systems and processes at headquarters establishing new operations in a new country big time creating international teams that can make international projects successful design thinking problem so at the headquarters level a lot of design thinking opportunities and in fact in today's world what is happening is the headquarters are calling in faculties getting their people trained up on design thinking and then the headquarters are giving a mandate to roll out design thinking in regional and local offices have i seen that happen yes i have seen that happen and very interestingly it can also go reverse for instance we trained a manufacturing capacity for three years, the design thinking project was going on. And ultimately, they fed all the information, all the outcomes of the design thinking back to the global headquarters. And then the global headquarters took a decision to roll out design thinking across the entire supply chain. They actually started running a lot of projects across the supply chain. Uh, so a lot of opportunities available for design thinking at headquarters. Carriers, logistics transporters satish has already talked about it big time big time opportunity in terms of being a 3pl being a 4pl doing your own logistics exercises within let me give you a case study since we're talking about logistics i was dealing with a seed manufacturing company and that seed manufacturing company is based in mumbai but it has warehouses and it has production units under contracting license contracting so they have a contract license and uh, the seed the technology for manufacturing the seeds is given away to uh, the local plants and at the international level and then the seed moves now let's look at the the supply chain problem that they had so when i was coaching uh, the senior leaders of the organization the supply chain problem was our agriculture is dependent highly on monsoon the way the rains would take effect the way they would take shape natural issue cannot be controlled by a human being at all they had invested in the most sophisticated and expensive weather forecasting tool unfortunately the weather forecasting tool was not able to accurately forecast the climatic conditions and typically monsoons when they will come what will happen with what intensity will they hit could not be forecasted and the general assumption was that in tropical countries it's very very difficult to forecast now if that were the situation that they were dealing with the problem was at the factory level 
as well as at the marketing level how much should we produce now how much should we produce is one of the fundamental problems in supply chain also because that's the material that moves now this was the problem india is a huge country they had warehouses located across the country in there was a central warehouse there's a northern west warehouse east west and south now somewhere the rain would happen somewhere the rain would not happen or somewhere where the rain was not expected to happen the rain would happen there are lots of complications so what were they doing they were moving massive amounts of seed from one warehouse to the other warehouse and that was not only creating pressure on the responsiveness of the supply chain because the farmer when he decides to sow the seeds at the retail store the seed has to be there but the retail store refuses to stock and why does he refuse to stock because he says when the rains will happen i will decide how much money to stock because obviously seeds are perishable and because the retailer is not stocking the distributor is not stocking because the distributor is not stocking the factory does not know how much to produce now this is a complicated problem so why in the process we went through uh, the only way out that was felt was to go educate the farmers and by the way they had a seed which had nothing to do with rains there were artificial ways in which drip irrigation could happen a lot of things were available but there was no ecosystem available to actually do all this so they started running an education program for the farmers and with that in as a design thinking outcome with that they realized that if the mindset of the farmer changes then the forecasting can actually become a lot more relevant relevant because with technology now uh, they were able to deal with uh, scenarios like this for sure that was a fantastic case study uh, and a kind of a project that we did now transportation problem there typically was that the moment a particular distributor or retailer requires the seeds and the seed is not available in the local warehouse because the forecasting was poor they had to move it from another warehouse and this became a design thinking problem in terms of how to adequately stock and how the movement of the seeds should happen across the country amazing design thinking problem warehouses big time design thinking problem big big time design thinking problem how let's look at it the warehouse i mean if you were to look at a fashion warehouse you know zara is a very interesting design thinking case study i would suggest all of you to look at how zara has built its own supply chain it's one of the most fascinating supply chains for sure now let's understand this zara has fabric creators tailors fashion designers all over the world with that kind of a situation the trends of fashion are different in different countries and therefore manufacturing is happening somewhere warehouses are somewhere now there is a central warehouse for europe and then there are warehouses which feeds to so the european union central warehouse and then there are country wide warehouses and the shipments start happening or there's a us warehouse there's a canada warehouse and now the shipments are happening now understand the cons the, the the problem here there are some countries where the rail and the road network is phenomenal no problem at all but there are some countries where the rail and road network is pathetic these are countries where maybe it's a hilly terrain or maybe these are countries where there are issues pertaining to transportation because the local laws are very stringent so zara has to cater to not only the inbound but the outbound also deal with the retail all that all that all that and this complexity throws up a major challenge in terms of whether to use air whether to use vessels whether to use rail whether to use road so each country throws up a very peculiar warehousing problem warehouses today are automated and also in warehousing if you look at how much to stock and once the and a lot of times these warehouses are third party warehouses that means they are being picked up for rentals and if they are being picked up for rentals that means the you you're paying for the total area that is available so you got to optimize that big 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 thing let me also share something which is a combination of factory and the carrier in an automotive company that i was once doing innovation project one of the innovation projects was 
a truck would come into the factory and get lost. Now, how did this happen? The truck came into the company and the company has a massive, massive campus. Forests, trees, and the truck driver would enter and the truck would just get parked somewhere and for days together the truck cannot be identified now either it could be creating theft or it could be just that the truck guy wants to be happy in the campus be safe in the campus and therefore decides to park the truck now this is a design thinking problem this is a design thinking problem now obviously you will say well the security should be in charge of that it was in charge of that but the point was that locating the truck was a big problem when they sat down for innovation they came up with a very simple idea. In fact, a lot of people came up with ideas like, let's have security doing rounds, let's have this, that. And one person said, hey, hold on, let's use technology. And what did they do? The moment the truck entered the campus, they put a RFID device onto the truck. And they knew exactly where the truck was. And they had all the data available as to when the truck entered and when the truck exited. Simple solution design thinking problem. Now, all of you, once I've given you a solution, you will say, well, why did you have to do design thinking here? One is the concept seems very simple, but there's a lot of intricate processes that had to be run uh, at the back end. How much of RFID devices to take, how to run it, how do we integrate it, what goes with security, what would go with stores, what would go with inspection, all that, all that, all that. So that had to be integrated. So that happened in the prototype of the design thinking uh, problem. So that's another case in the supply chain. Retailers, retailers are, I mean, retailer is a massive design thinking thing. And when we talk about a retailer, let's not talk about a small time retailer. Let's talk about malls. Let's talk about, talk about big stores. Now let's say there is a food store and that food store is stocking a lot of stuff. And by the way, food stores are not really stocking the food. They are real estate guys who are selling space. A typical peculiar design thinking problem. How much to stock, what to stock, where to keep what, what kind of promos to run, which space should be sold at what price, which products. So there are some fast moving products and they may not pay that kind of money for uh, the real estate cost because that also creates a pull within the retail store. So lots of complications. How are our customers behaving? For instance, in a food store, if you leave your mobile phone number as a part of the membership, it's not you, it's the phone number and your entire behavior is now being tracked on the phone. So a lot of analytics running in the background, a lot of technology running in the background. So retail itself is a customer experience. Like if you go to the Ikea store in Mumbai or Hyderabad, you also have a restaurant there. That means they are creating so much of an experience for a customer that he can spend days together in the Ikea store and you can keep buying and then they have all the logistics built in so that goods can be delivered to your house. They also provide services in terms of how you would want to re renovate your house or you want to do up your house. That facility is also available. So this becomes a combination of supply chain and the value chain put together. And now we're combining the both and we're working on design thinking problems. So if you notice across the supply chain, you can actually run design thinking problems and the customer is now integrated with the supply chain. Today, in international supply chains, the government is deregulating a lot of things. The government is deregulating even compliances. Now, if you are a company of reputation and if you're honest and if the customs guys have tracked you well, what they allow is, interestingly, the truck comes in, you load up your container there and you put all your goods you certify you provide that these are the goods there you've got the seal you put the seal and the customs guys believe you you have a complete trophy but if they catch even one particular incidence whether it was intentional or unintentional uh, this particular facility can get to risk and therefore it also becomes a design thinking problem from the finance point of view that because now the cost incurred in compliances is being reduced, how do we ensure that we keep the process running so that the compliance deviations don't happen? A design thinking problem. On supply chains, like I said, design thinking absolutely works. And the 
best way to deal with design thinking in supply chains and why you're teaching supply chains is case study. If you've got any questions on supply chain, please post it on the message box and I'll be happy to take it. I'm not going to delve too much on supply chains because I think we've talked about the value chain. Satish has already talked about supply chains and I don't want to bore you with too much of content on supply chains, but a very interesting subject. And I can assure you it requires immense intelligence and a lot of engineering expertise to actually design solutions in supply chain, a fantastic opportunity for colleges and academicians for sure. While we talk about supply chains, supply chain also requires an entrepreneurial spirit. I think entrepreneurs understand the entire supply chain much better. And therefore, let's look at entrepreneurship. And one of the reasons I've packed this session up and I'm going to spend some time on this is because some of your colleges are also running incubators and accelerators. And it's time to now integrate supply chain with entrepreneurship. This is what I teach when I teach entrepreneurship. And when I teach international entrepreneurship, I particularly talk about the S curve. Now, what is an S curve and how does design thinking come into play here? In your accelerators and incubators, you must inform your aspiring entrepreneurs 18 months, one eight, that means around one and a half years, 18 months in the incubator. So by the time they pass out of the college, they have got everything that they need to get their entrepreneurship going. That means the moment they step out of the college, they're good to go. And running an incubation center and an accelerator in an academic institution is the best possible proposition that we can do. And we will build entrepreneurial alumni. Now, what does this S curve say? If you look at the multiple S's, but let's talk about one S in its own isolation. If you talk about one S in our isolation, in the is Dabawala SCM a design thinking model? I shall certainly take up, take that up and I'll devote my time on supply chain of Dabawala's great question. Let's talk about it. Once we end this uh, particular session, I'll take up the questions then. Now, what does the S curve of entrepreneurship say? And very critical for entrepreneurs to understand this, budding entrepreneurs to understand this. The S is at 45 degrees, if you notice. So there's a 45 degree angle and the S is moving on a 45 degree. So what does that mean? It means that when the business starts, the concept of serendipity comes in. Now, what is serendipity? Serendipity also applies in international supply chains, by the way. What is serendipity? Serendipity is the first couple of deals happen purely by luck purely by chance very interesting which means as an entrepreneur when i set up my business a couple of deals in the beginning happen because i've already spoken to a few people who are very closely knit with me so if you don't believe in coincidences i can give you a logical explanation also to this the theory of serendipity says that every time a company starts it has already talked about the concept to a lot of people and because you've talked about the concept to a lot of people the on the innovation curve the three percent people who are the innovators who love your idea want to take that idea up because you know they want that idea to be implemented early plus you've got a relationship and they trust you also so the first couple of deals happen very fast did that happen i mean i'll give you the case study of atyasa itself when I started Atyasa 20 years ago, after I gave up my corporate career, the first two or three deals happened possibly within 60 days. And I was like, wow, I think I've taken a fantastic decision as an entrepreneur. Good, I quit my corporate career. Now, if you look at that S on the 45 degree, the curve dips. And when it dips below the 45 degree line, that is when the entrepreneur after the first two deals experiences a low no business happens did that happen to me yes and when that happened to me and at that point in time i was not certified in entrepreneurship at all in fact i was a novice in entrepreneurship i'm a first generation entrepreneur in a Kanadiga family everybody government service Everybody ran a very comfortable life. 
and I am the first first generation entrepreneur in the entire family. There was a meeting held in my family because I was sitting at home, possibly doing nothing. But I was doing something. I was reading up. I was doing extensive reading up, which people didn't know. Very interestingly, it became a difficult proposition even for a lot of my friends to speak to me because I was worthless. There was no brand backing me up. I was not a brand. Nothing was happening. So keeping the sad story aside, the lull part extended for three years. I was getting desperate. I was on a flight. And on the flight next to me was sitting an elderly Gujarati gentleman. He realized I was desperate. And he looked at me and, and he said, but can I talk to you? I said, yeah, certainly. He said, what are you doing? So I said, I've just started my entrepreneurship and the business is not doing well. And he said, that is bound to happen because for 1000 days, you're going to experience the lull. I'll come to design thinking very soon. But after the three years get over, and if you maintain the quality of your delivery, if you maintain the quality of the product and you built the core competence required to run the business, which is a design thinking problem. After three years, the curve moves into a growth phase. That means there's an early start, there's a decline, and then the growth phase comes. And if the company is not ready to deal with the growth phase during the decline, the company goes bust either when it is in a decline or the company goes bust because the supply chains create massive noise because they've not been designed to cater to that growth that the product or the service suddenly faces. And while the growth happens, the S curve dips again, and therefore the company from the maturity moves into decline. And therefore the multiple S curves, if we get into innovation and design thinking, we will not experience one S curve only. After the first S curve starts declining, I reinvent my business model. Like for instance, if you look at Ola, Ola after the pandemic has also gone into rentals. It has also gone into, uh, you know, the cars that could be secondhand cars that can move in the market. Ola faced up a problem during pandemic, right? The, the, a lot of taxi operators could not pay their, unfortunately could not pay their EMIs and therefore the vehicles were taken away by the banks. You have to reinvent. So you have to be in line with the times and design thinking permits you to keep doing design thinking across each stages of this S curve. And when there is a decline of an S curve because of an existing business model, whether it is a business value chain or it is a supply chain. So I'm integrating both. So these curves start making sense to us. We have the next S curve starting off. That means when we are in a growth phase in the design thinking, we've already spotted a futuristic problem. We've already prototyped the next reinvention model of the company. And by the time the company gets into maturity and decline, we got a new S curve going. That means the company will, will go through only one decline in the entire lifespan of the entrepreneurial journey. If the entrepreneur is design thinking, if the entrepreneur is not a design thinking professional, what's going to happen? Back up. The S curve will move up to the growth period and then the maturity and then the decline will start happening. And if you look at the first S curve, the decline is not controlled and therefore the company goes bust. It gets liquidated. It gets shut down. That means the only entrepreneurial ventures which will consistently design think are the entrepreneurial ventures which will do well. And that is where our academic institutions also come into play where we can support these entrepreneurs with our design thinking capability, our technical and management prowess combined with design thinking, creating a core competence in the educational institutions and we can support entrepreneurship solutions big time. I see a shift in India. I see a lot of young entrepreneurs emerging. Not many entrepreneurs now want to take up service or in employment. A lot of people want to start up their businesses immediately. Some of them take short term corporate experience, learn at the expense, maybe five years, seven years, they get onto entrepreneurship. I'm also seeing a lot of retired professionals from corporate after retirement, 
because our normal age also has moved up, right? Because of the quality of life and the medicines that are available. So the lifespan is increasing. Post retirement, they get into entrepreneurial ventures. Do I have one particular company that I work with? Yes. After that gentleman retired from an engineering company, started a company, which is where he is now designing, uh, 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 he's designing powerhouses for industrial setups in remote locations. And they create those powerhouses and give them on rent. So these are gen sets which are designed and there's a massive supply chain that is operating behind. So that's another thing. So I think the message that I want to drive here is that there is an entrepreneurial S curve and that entrepreneurial S curve can only be managed through innovation. And in the current turbulent times, design thinking is one of the solutions, though the business innovation process can also work in terms of prototyping a product, prototyping a service, no problem there. But if they're dealing with turbulences, which all entrepreneurship propositions do, design thinking works for them. What are the challenges that entrepreneurial ventures have where design thinking can be put into place? One of the biggest problems that all entrepreneurial ventures face is cash flow, cash burn, cash stuck out. There's no money to run the organization. Salaries cannot be paid. Raw materials cannot be ordered. Shipments not happening. And it is a complete uh, whirlpool that a company can get into. Therefore, that's one big problem. The second problem is a recruitment problem. Big time problem for entrepreneurs and startups, big time issues. Creation of systems processes, which are sustainable, creating an organization in the long run, value systems of the organization, mission, vision, strategies of the organization, all design thinking problems. Setting up supply chains, setting up retails, Constantly inventing the business models and the products together. Massive. Now, can startups afford design thinkers? No. But can they speak to academic institutions? And can they take help from them to get their ventures going? Absolutely. And they'll be willing to pay for sure. This is a typical business cycle when it comes to the S-curve of entrepreneurship. And design thinking enables you allows you to operate this. Certain more facts that I want to give about entrepreneurship and then I'll move to answering your questions. Let's look at the design thinking problems at each stage. At the launch stage, what to sell can be a design thinking problem. Once I have decided what to sell, how do I create my company? What kind of a structure do I give to my company? Design thinking problem. What kind of technologies can I bring in? Design thinking problem. When the company takes shape and when the company is on a decline, what should I do to compress that design? Unfortunately, 20 years ago, there was no concept of design thinking. Had there been a concept of design thinking, possibly I could have crunched that three years into maybe one year. How to deal with that, that low? Uh, okay, we'll talk about the book, don't worry. So when it goes down at the decline stage, how do we deal with that? That's a design thinking problem. When we take on to a growth path, growth path has its own challenges. It creates massive noise in the system. At each stage of the growth path, every noise becomes a design thinking problem. And when the entrepreneurial venture does well and reaches its maturity, a lot of competitors have come in. They have copied the idea. They are moving the idea. That again becomes a design thinking problem in terms of how the organization is going to reinvent and rebuild itself. And should an organization get into decline? I can tell you, I am writing an article on how design thinking helps the strategic process of transformation. I can tell you this with absolute confidence. Any organization on the verge of shutdown if it has to be revamped and brought back into action, design thinking is the solution. So if you look at it across the S-curve, the design thinking is at play constantly. And that's what I wanted to talk about when it came to entrepreneurship. Keep that at the back of your mind. Entrepreneurship also integrates business value chain and supply chains. And when you're teaching design thinking, you will always have students in the class who would be aspiring entrepreneurs this could make sense to them and therefore business value chain and supply chains can be integrated in this conversation too.
you can connect with us. Keep in touch with us. Don't worry, I'm not winding up the process. There's a lot more to talk about. Keep in touch with us. We're absolutely willing to help you. We want you to become successful when it comes to design thinking individually and at the institution level also. You want to join me in terms of design thinking networks. You want to be a part of mentoring programs for corporate organizations in terms of mentoring. I have no problems. Become a part of our process. We can work together and we can create great stuff for people. Sorry. Let me now come back to you and talk to you. Let me also take up questions now. We've had multiple sessions. And I think you would have noticed my sincere objective of the session is to make design thinking successful in all the academic institutions that are participating here so that ultimately we contribute to the national economy. That's the whole project that I'm working with as far as VTU is concerned. There's nothing else exciting but to pick up big projects and do them because that becomes a learning experience. We build the ecosystem. I'll talk about it, but let me take up the questions. Is Dabawala supply chain management a design thinking model? Madam Shubha, what a wonderful question. I mean, I'm in love with these supply chain guys, Dabawala guys in Mumbai. Possibly they were never trained on design thinking. But they created such an amazing case study, which is a complete design thinking case study. Let's talk about that. And then we will get into any other questions that may come up. But let me answer uh, Madam Saljanya's question. We didn't get a single book as per VTU syllabus. You can't get a syllabus for design thinking, Madam. I think we've got to change our approach towards design thinking. Even if I write a book, which I shall, and that's a promise, and I give it to you in April, design thinking is what the faculty does. The faculty is extremely powerful when design thinking is being delivered. So I'll take up the questions as we go up, Dr. Lakshmi, don't worry. Let me handle the supply chain of Dabawalas. Dabawala dealing with a very complex problem in the city of Mumbai. What is the complex problem? The complex problem is serving hot home food to the person anywhere in the city of Mumbai at the office or any other location. A routinized way but the complexity of the design thinking problem shoots up because you may have people delivering the dabas who do not have the time or cannot read what is written on the daba. And therefore, the entire solution lies in color coding. They have come up with such a beautiful color coding that where the daba goes is from where the dabba goes is where the dabba returns. It is delivered on time. It is picked up on time. Hot food being served. Meticulous chain, supply chain operating where people are picking up, giving it away. You know, people are coming together, consolidation, moving on to a train, decoupling, moving, picking up the dabbas, bringing that, bringing that back, going back. Amazing operates to the clock. Whether it is raining, not raining, absolutely works on the clock. Disruptions can only happen if local trains get disrupted, but that's a rare phenomena. As far as we are concerned, it operates completely. In fact, the Dabawala thing, you can, as faculties, pick up a case study because Dabawala case study is available on YouTube. It's available as books and you can give it away to your students to apply design thinking principles on how the Dabbawala chain works. This can be a fantastic learning exercise and a beauty of the exercise is the folks didn't know what design thinking was, but yet they created such a superior design thinking case study. All right, hope I've done justice to the Dabbawala model. Uh, when in decline stage, how to ensure we don't give up on the spirit of working on it? What measures do we consider so that we sustain? Oh, Kavita ji, persistence is the core of entrepreneurship. The problem is people quit too early. Have I seen cash burns in my business? Absolutely. I keep seeing cash burns even now. After having consolidated the business over the last 20 years, 
because we're living in a very very unproductive very very volatile and very very complicated unpredictable market two things required to give you a direct answer through design thinking create a firm that's absolutely resilient and that's my phd topic currently with the university of pune create a a resilient business model which i have created i'm testing it for hypothesis now and design thinking is definitely a part of it that's number one and number two it is not only the resilience of the organization but it is also the resilience of the entrepreneur i think the best of the entrepreneurs that i have coached and being an entrepreneur myself we don't remember our failures ever we only remember our successes and we are so pumped up with hope that somehow we believe that we will come out of every situation that the organization goes through and did we yes is it a pygmalion effect yes i think every entrepreneur has set the expectation and wired the brain in a way that they know that someday they will come out of a low and they don't give it a timeline and therefore they tend to succeed and that's the best way to handle a decline madam i hope i answered your question uh let's take the next question so why should design thinking be taken as a subject instead can we ask for a topic of interest they can build a good work practically rather than looking at credit scoring in the subject well a great uh, thing to go by but i think uh, it's time that design thinking integrates formally into the education system i am currently working with colleges on specialization courses in design thinking you're talking about credits uh, we are actually custom making specializes specialization courses in design thinking and postgraduate uh, diploma in business management pgdm degrees in management being provided as design thinkers well if 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 institutions are looking at specialization courses in design thinking i think it's a great idea madam that design thinking can at least start off as credit courses but can they take it up as a hobby yeah there are certain universities where there are uh, those coffee clubs hobby clubs where design thinking is being taught design thinking is being done but if in vtu if you've decided that colleges can run design thinking why not i think you're a stage ahead you're a step ahead and by the way uh, i'll tell you as the time passes by a lot of students are going to look for where design thinking courses are available because that's going to create employability they will certainly come to colleges where design thinking is being taught uh professor somya design thinking in designing the curriculum yes but how can that be used in assessment and evaluation oh well i mean uh, as a faculty i've been teaching design thinking for some time now and the way i assess is one is the mcqs for sure secondly the project or a case study and the third is your final assessment is going to be the viva even if you conduct a 10 minute viva per student or even a 5 minute i think as a design thinking specialist that i am now in a couple of minutes i realize the depth of the student and how much study they have done in design thinking even if they are able to accurately predict how the design thinking process works that means if they have the experiential anecdotes available to them in terms of what happened that worked for them and didn't work for them and the resultant of the prototype that they have created it doesn't matter what is the sample size they tested the sample size could be you know could be typically a standard sample size even of 40 to 50 people but as long as the standard normal distribution of 40 to 50 people is asserted and they have a result associated with it i think you can evaluate there's no problem at all but yes uh, don't make it too stringent because you're not experiencing absolute uh, corporate high end design thinking projects but if they are also operating as interns uh, in design thinking projects along with the industry academic uh, program on design thinking i think there you are having a real time assessment of the student in terms of the en entire engagement cycle i leave that to your wisdom on how would you like to do that well according absolutely in uh, dabawala as we talked about it thank you so much professor shubha uh, design thinking should be based as an example of project based learning and not restricted to the subject where assessment is done Mm. I agree with you, but fortunately or unfortunately, we are examining bodies. Uh, it is a proctored process, 
and because universities and colleges are examining bodies there is an examination and there is a grade to the subject <laughs> can't help it and uh, yeah possibly in the corporate organizations also there is a rating system in the corporate organizations when i learn when i deliver my e learning program which is selling like hot in corporate organizations right now my e learning program has a 70% passing it also generates grades and would an hr head of the organization want to know what is the score of each person yes they would want to know the score of each person because organizations are very very particular about design thinking now and satish is absolutely managing the analytics of each and every person in the organization who's doing a doing a design thinking course and with those analytics we know what time they logged in how much time did they spend each quiz what is the score that's available real time and what is when was the final certificate triggered by the system automatically is also something that is known so yeah that's the way assessments happen uh, why can't we convert dabawala business as an e dabawala through online mode in bangalore city good design thinking project maybe some institution and it is possible i'm not trying to hide away or shy away from your question uh, professor vijay yes it is absolutely possible an app can be built there are a lot of people who can operate in the chain and possibly it can work much more effectively than the existing process a great idea uh, professor vishwanath without a single book proper notes and question bank it will be difficult at sem 1 level students i have opened up my entire content for you and if i have opened up my entire content for you which is in line with your curriculum i don't think it's going to be difficult in fact i'm saying your students can also come on to the content and vtu knows about the content and vtu is okay about the content no problem at all don't worry professor vishwanath let's not get hooked on to books there is enough ecosystem that vtu has created for you it can certainly be a success no worries at all there's no worry at all so sojana madam please <laughs> there is enough content and uh, dr anupama patel we have a right yeah we also we can write a book why not why not and if you need my help if you need the case studies when you writing the book go ahead i am at your disposal absolutely passionate about uh, design thinking very happy to help you can case studies from innovators dilemma by professor kishin be used as why not why not innovators dilemma i mean any dilemma situation is a classic design thinking problem what a fantastic idea dr vignesh love it i think that's one of the one of the fascinating ideas that has emerged here absolutely okay on our own for with you using the notes we prepare for teaching the first batch no oh, why not why not you are the early starters go ahead and possibly you can help each other also design thinking is natural phenomena of educated or uneducated people who love and enjoy their profession and life we are trying to improve the number of such persons just stuck in my mind am i right you are bang on sir you are absolutely bang on design thinking does not require highly qualified people design thinking can happen in fact let me share very honestly i am a product of engineering from a college in belgaum wasn't too great in my studies something happened and clicked and ultimately i became a university ranker and in international universities also my scores are very high but an average person moves into design thinking and today emerges as a brand internationally as a not only a design thinking consultant but also a behavioral consultant i was at just amongst the top 5 consultants in this space by a panel very happy and very proud about it i think it's not about qualifications it's about academics it's not also about how you done in academics it's about what is the academics that you done in real time in life you're so right uh sir don't you think it would be better if design thinking is assessed as outcome of project work case study absolutely absolutely but mcqs well if your university loves it if it's a policy matter like i said i always stand by the policy of the university for me what is important my life operates like this first comes the planet so i do everything that's good for the planet second comes my country i do everything that's right for the country third i do for organizations 
That means if VTU has said that MCQs are there, I honor it, I respect it, I take it as a policy. If they change it, I respect that also. After the organization comes my team or my organization and then comes me. I'm the last in the, in the ladder. And that's the way my entire story happens and possibly that's the success of uh, my venture also because that's something that we practice and I ensure that all my team members also practice that. Uh, please send the assessment link because later we need to go for invigilation duty. It will be sent. Okay. Yes. Kindly share prescribed textbook from university as PDF. Well, I think somebody did give those the details, but it's available in your syllabus and uh, uh, I don't know whether PDFs can be given because they could be controlled under copyright. Uh, congratulations. sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I think God's been kind to me. A personal question. Can we invite you over to our college to conduct workshops? Why not? Why not? I love to work with institutions. I love to work with colleges. We'll be very happy to partner with you and help your colleges succeed. Look, my principle of life is very simple. I think I've done it all that I needed in my life. Now the life is all about helping people win, helping organizations win. Very happy to help you, uh, Dr. Soumya. No problem at all at your disposal anytime. Uh, just get reach out to me and we'll be very happy to help. And this message is for everybody here. But everything gets rooted via VTU. I have love compliances. I don't want to violate that. Let me see how this model can also be worked out. Uh, the sessions were good and it would be better if we conducted after university exams. Very first conducted after university exams. Fair enough. Uh, fantastic way of looking at life, sir. Thank you for the perception. Thank you so much, Professor Amit. Loved your questions. Please do keep in touch. Uh, your uh, creative juices are fascinating. Completely excited with the way your questions came. But when we say qualifications are not needed for innovation, then why are we not encouraging Jugard? Sorry if I misunderstood your earlier answer. Before I end, let me give you the Jugard story. You didn't misunderstand my answer. I don't hate Jugard, but let me share where does the Jugard story start? The Jugard story started in the city of Kanpur. When I went to Kanpur as a sales guy selling computers to IIT at Kanpur, and uh, I saw vehicles without number plates operating made out of gen sets, not out of the internal combustion engines. I got intrigued and I got into understanding of what it is. So I asked somebody, what do you call these vehicles? And they said, we call it the Jugard. Now here's why design thinking does not go with Jugard. That particular vehicle, A, is illegal. Number two, that particular vehicle is not tested for its validity and reliability. It is not undergoing any innovation. It is basically some person comes up with a crooked idea of getting a vehicle in place, which is completely not in line. And therefore, uh, Jugard coming out from there, that's the reason I don't connect. And that's why I don't connect design thinking. I think my last input to you before I wind it up, Design thinking is a tool in the hand of corrupt people can be extremely damaging. Ethics of design thinking are extremely critical. Like ethics in research, all the doctors here, all the PhDs here, research is done through ethics and those ethics have to be complied. Design thinking ethics are extremely important. Design thinking is such a powerful technique and a methodology if used for wrong purposes can damage it completely. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure being with you. Uh, Happy New Year to all of you and have a great design thinking story. And I hope each one of you here on this call are able to feel extremely proud about having created some design thinking outcome which benefited everybody around. Thank you so much. I hand you back over to the organizers. Thank you so much. Please do keep in touch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nikit Kardiki, sir, for giving wonderful lecture. All the participants are gained the knowledge. I think from last uh, one week, people participants are gained the knowledge and different aspects on design thinking of uh, uh, strategies about uh, supply chain, supply chain, and uh, innovation applications in design thinking. Uh, the, as for the syllabus and as for the industry standard. What you have to, what is required for today's uh, thing? And thank you very much, Nikit sir. You were the uh, speech.
and your valuable time with the schedule come and support at us like anything the service is recorded in the university sir definitely we are grateful to you on behalf of university we are expressing our uh, thanks to you sir thank you so much sir always available my warranty is available till i live don't worry sir i uh, definitely thank you very much sir <laughs> and uh,